so light, this is uh, the final countdown, uh, T minus two. Lightning, this is also lightning round part two about your lion eyes, about um, uh, just a random set of uh, fact checks. So I, I will start us off with a great Chico Marks as I did yesterday, and uh, he'll set the stage. Your Excellency, here's your water. Your Excellency, I thought you left. Oh, no, I don't leave. But I saw you with my own eyes. Well, who are you going to believe, me or your own eyes? Okay, let's see what our line eyes are telling us. So uh, here's one that, that has become a golden oldie, but it's a newbie about the uh, you know, what uh, uh, Trump has done for African Americans and how he has been basically the greatest president ever uh, since, uh, except for President Lincoln. And in some cases, he's hedged on that. So here you go. And I say very modestly that I have done more for the African American community than any president since Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> done uh, a lot uh, positively with regards to economy and that's affected everyone but the way he portrays it as doing more for African Americans than any other president Lincoln obviously is false um, and it's it's tough to quantitatively measure but even if you do qualitative stuff the, the clip shows about obviously the civil rights during President Johnson but I've mentioned in, in other things that there are other administrations that had notable accomplishments even even Nixon administration uh, but going back into Truman and, and a variety of administrations made some substantial progresses on, on civil rights for, for African Americans. So, um, and then also his statements about on, uh, about what he's done for African American community typically hinges on unemployment rates and uh, historically black colleges and universities. With regards to unemployment rates, those trends were already going down for African American community during the uh, President Obama administration, and, and the, the percent changes by year were about the same as what it is, has been under Trump. So basically, Trump inherited a trend, and that trend continued to, uh, with regards to historically black colleges and universities um you know yes trump has been funding them he has not saved them but he's been funding them uh but that was also happening under the obama administration and also um this is a congressional initiative so basically trump is signing but it's happening under congress and trump is not pushing for as much funding as as is available through congress so um so he's certainly inflating that next item is having to do uh with um, the common criticism by trump and others about what biden said uh, on trump's china travel ban when I took bold action to issue a travel ban on China, very early indeed, Joe Biden called it hysterical and xenophobic. So this to me is a small, you could say, but dangerous lie. The, the small is just, it's, he's just, it's like, a, oh, he called me this or she called me that. Um, so that's the small element about this. But the big element is just basically taking a nugget of information, conflating it with other information and making it something that's totally not true. But not only that, it's that you uh, don't just say it once or twice, it is a common repeating thing by you. And then it's a common repeating thing by your supporters and people who are elected to Congress and Senate, they also repeat the same things. And the conservative pundits on TV and radio say the same thing. So that's an example of uh, the danger of these lies. Everyone believes it, but it's just not true. And so uh, that's kind of fact check uh, uh, in, in that segment. Um, then and next thing is on the greatest economy in history. In a new term as president, we will again build the greatest economy in history. no doubt the economy was good. So he's just basically taking something that's good and saying it was great, and not only just great, but the greatest ever. That's his uh, tendency. So uh, just an example of classic Trumpism. Next item is, is also, I would say, maybe a meaningless lie about power outages in California. 
These same policies led to crippling power outages in California just last week. Everybody saw that. I don't know what to say, say on that. He, um, you know, he doesn't like Governor Gavin Newsom. You know, California's a blue state. He continually can tax things, uh, California. And he says he just makes up things about people and things he doesn't like. So um, not a really meaningful uh, item, but it's just kind of interesting. The next item is uh, more important with regards to, uh, the, um, I guess, open borders. The Biden plan would eliminate America's borders in the middle of a global pandemic. And he's even talking about taking the wall down. How about that? So he's basically saying things that are false about uh, uh, Biden and, and the Democrats. So, um, and, and I guess the more important thing is that one of the lies that does uh, stick is that the Democrats are for open borders and they are not. That's not part of their platform, not part of Biden's platform. However, to the uh, uh, Democrats, it was the Democrats' fault because they, they continually attack Trump's border policies, but they don't promote their own. Um, so the next item is having to do with police funding, very common tech, uh, topic. When asked if he supports cutting police funding, Joe Biden replied, yes, absolutely. So this is an example, and this is, keeps happening, where they uh, talk about defunding and they, they falsely assign a, a position to Biden, and then they keep going at it, even though they know it's false and everyone knows it's false, but they keep saying it, and then people start believing it. So that's, that's a problem there. And again, it's, they're also conflating information to make something that wasn't true. So that's uh, unfortunate. But the next one, this last one, is having to do with COVID again. And th this is important because it's, it's such a, a huge problem worldwide wide, but also for the U.S. Recent months, our nation and the entire planet has been struck by a new and powerful, invisible enemy. We are delivering life-saving therapies and will produce a vaccine before the end of the year, or maybe even sooner. So this is the part of uh, partisan politics I just don't get, I don't support it. Just like, you know what, uh, just facts are facts. Uh, no one thinks that the vaccine is going to come out in the time frame that, uh, or no scientific experts think it's going to come out in the time frame that Trump is pushing. So it just shouldn't be said. But it is true that they're being very aggressive on it, and that's a positive. Uh, you know, we should applaud that. Uh, but don't say false things about when it will become available and how it will be distributed. Just be factual and accurate. Um, and the, the interesting thing here is that clearly there is a, um, you know, Trump is saying these things with an election timing because he's been pushing for months that this would come out by election day or at least uh, hinting at that or saying it relatively strongly. So clearly there's an electoral thing there. Even if the election weren't happening, he would be uh, likely, uh, you know, falsely promoting the speed at which the vaccine would become available. That's just his nature on how he says and does things. So that's, that's about it. And oh, the music is happening again. So there we go. Uh, catch you later.